Today's interview is with Travis Steffens. Travis is definitely one of the coolest human beings I think I've ever met. We met at a biohacking conference in Orlando through a very synchronistic little journey that I was on, meeting all sorts of people, going with the flow. And somebody told me that he had a breathwork app. And so I got interested in that, obviously, because it's in alignment with what I do. And went over to talk to him and asked him, so like, how'd you get into this? Why do you have a breathwork app? And the answer just honestly floored me. And I'm going to let him tell you uh, more of the backstory of that. I was like, okay, that's really freaking cool. <laughs> so make sure you just, just listen. We're going to get a little bit into breath in the beginning and why breath work matters. And, and Travis um, shares what actually happens in your body and you know how it works scientifically on top of more of the conscious side of it and the healing and personal growth side. But then he's going to get into the answer to what I just told, talked to you about in terms of why he created this. Travis um, has a background in uh, real estate investing. He's a social impact real estate investor. And when I say social impact, I mean social impact. Listen to what he has created. It's so freaking cool. We get into um, what conscious capitalism is. Um, I would definitely consider him like the crowning example of the how beautiful capitalism can be when done correctly and with connection to yourself and your heart and source and all the things that he's about. So this is a really inspiring episode. Travis is one of the most inspiring people I think I've met <laughs> maybe ever. So I hope you guys enjoy his story and his wisdoms as much as I have. We'll go ahead and get into it. Here's Travis Steffens. Okay. So Travis, I've been super excited to do this because I went to, we met at the biohacking event out in Orlando right before I moved to Hawaii. It was this crazy, like, I should not be going to a conference right now. I need to be packing. My house was in shambles. I had so much to do, but I was just like, you know, those intuitive things hit, hit. And I was like, go. Right. So I went no expectations, just flowing with the energy. I'm like, I just know I'm supposed to be here. And I met so many incredible people and you were definitely one of them. And it was so funny because I was just going with my little flowy. We wound up at some dinner. I didn't know anybody at that table. Just so you know, <laughs> I just happened to be talking to somebody in the lobby and they're like, Hey, do you want to come? And I'm like, sure. And then you wound up on the total opposite side of the table for me, opposite side, total co opposite corners. And I was, somebody said he has a breath work app. And I just had this like intuitive, I, I got myself up. I stole somebody's seat that they had moved out of. And I said, I was like, can you tell me about your app and why you made a, you know, why, why'd you do that? Why are you into breath work? And you gave me like a really very concise and powerful, like 30 second answer to that. And I want to get deeper into that a little more deep into why you made a breath work app but before we do. Um, first of all, thank you for coming on. And second of all, I, I wanted to hit on why breath work matters to you, right? Like what in your own personal journey, what has breath doing breath work meant to you in your life. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me on Tara. It's such an honor. You have a beautiful platform and you have a beautiful heart Thanks. and you're changing the world. So I love that. Thanks. So breath is life. It's the first thing we do when we enter the planet and it's the last thing we do when we leave. And if you've ever watched a baby be born and it comes out and it takes its first gasp of breath, you actually, it's almost like you see the life enter this little physical form. And then if you've ever sat by the bedside of somebody who's passing away, they're always gasping for that breath. It's a, And breath truly is the source of all life. And the oxygen on this planet's 21.8%. It's perfect balance. It's not 21.9 or 21.7. It's 21.8%. And so when something is that finite and that in tune, and if you believe in consciousness at any level or God or the universe or whatever you want to call it, our bodies are made of 99 to the 14th power of empty space. And so if empty space being an oxygen molecule meets empty space that is in the form of matter that is talking to Tara, that Tara is observing Travis talking back to her, What's happening as we're breathing in this oxygen that's keeping us conscious and alive to have this interaction together? And what's in that molecule called O2 that is interacting with empty space and keeping this consciousness in this conversation alive? And so 
I have been on the self-development journey now for 16 years and finding and knowing thyself and oxygen has played a massive part in my transformation from not knowing myself to knowing myself and knowing what internally drives who I am. Mm. Mm. Well, that's a good answer. Yeah. And I, you know, I tell people often, most of my people know I'm a huge advocate of plant medicines done correctly. I know you've had experiences with plant Mm -hmm. medicines and then also obviously like breath work (laughs) is a huge part of your life. Um, and I tell people all the time, I'm like, just start with a holotropic breath work workshop or some, you know, some playoff of that. Cause I'm like, honestly, like I would say it's equal, if not more powerful for me in terms of like emotional processing and seeing things that I wasn't seeing or having these really powerful somatic shifts in my body where I'm like, I just get it now, you know? And so, um, can you speak on some of the, you know, self-discovery, like for somebody who's never tried, you know, uh, like a, a more extended breath work journey, right? Like, what would you say to them? You know, the, if they ask, what do you get out of that? Like, what is it like? What do you, what do you, what do you take away from it? What would you say? And I love that you said that you recommend holotropic breath work to them because plant medicine has become a bit of a fad and it's not something you should do because it's a fad. It's something you should do because you're called into it. Mm-hmm. And if you want to experience something that is, in my opinion, oftentimes more powerful than ayahuasca because if, if if i've seen many people go in that weren't ready for aya and they have no experience at all and they're um, scared we, and they're yeah. resisting and it was like horrible yeah that happens yeah, for sure the shaman's <laughs> up there shocking them and doing things to try to get them to absorb the eye and, and let go and it just mm-hmm. it can or cannot be a beautiful journey mm-hmm. but with breath work you're going in and I don't care what it's like you're let go or be dragged kind of a thing, but you can stop at any time. And that's, what's cool is you can, you can go back to a normal breath and within seconds to minutes, you're back in stasis. Right. And so holotropic breath work or rebirthing, it's also called or psychedelic breath work allows you to, and I can get into the science of how it works if you want me to. Yes, please. Okay. We have those types of people. We have the conscious and the science. I mean, I'm like that. So I think I yeah. probably attract a lot of those kind of people. So yeah, for awesome. sure. Please. So in holotropic breath work, what's really interesting is that in your pineal gland, you carry a, a lot of dimethyltryptamine that's coded to your DNA. And in the base of your lungs, you have dimethyltryptamine that's coded to your DNA. And so when you access your own dimethyltryptamine that's coded to your own DNA, your spiritual journey is going to be wildly different than taking it from a root or 5-MeO-DMT or any of these other um, forms of dimethyltryptamine. And so dimethyltryptamine is designed to separate the soul from the body. So if Bob is driving down the road and gets into a head-on collision, every single near-death experience that I've ever read about, they're all the same in the fact that they have a they have a cataclysmic event and all of a sudden they're looking down at their body. And so a hundred thousand NDEs can't be wrong. Right. Mm. So the dimethyltryptamine that's in the body is designed to separate the soul from the physical structure. And in Aya or these other medicines, there's certain doses that cause that to happen at a larger level or, and you have a shaman there to keep you integrated with the physical form and things of that nature. But with breath, your dimethyltryptamine is accessed through breath and it's accessed through hyperventilating at such a level that it causes your your pH balance of your blood, your alkalinity to raise at such a high level that it starts to actually shut the body down. Now I'm going to stop for a second there and I'm going to go to the legend of Soma, who's you, I'm sure many of you have heard of Soma breath, Niraj Nayak. Niraj he was on the show. Oh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Love Niraj. So um, he's on the app as well. Mm-hmm. And um, Niraj used the word Soma because of where its origin came from. And the origin and the legend of Soma is that the gods had an elixir and they would drink this elixir 
And when they would drink this elixir, it would allow them to have altered states of consciousness. And they ran out of this elixir. And so one of the gods was charged to find something that would be equally as powerful as this elixir. And so he comes back to the other gods and says, I figured it out. I found it. And it's breath. I can reach that altered state of consciousness through breath that we had in the elixir. And so they all got together and they made a promise to humans and to the whatever you want to call it, the universal system that you can never take life through breath, that breath can only ever give life. Hmm. Now I'm going to go back to, forgive me if there was an interruption there one second. I'm so sorry. No problem. Uh, um, make sure we don't have that again. So I'm going to go back to the body shutting down. So when you go through this, hyperventilating process, your alkalinity is raising 70, 80, 90, 100 basis points over alkaline, which is 7.2. And when you increase the body that many basis points, pretty much with anything, it's going to have a cataclysmic event. So the body starts to shut down. And when the body starts to shut down and yet you're fully conscious, your pineal gland starts to leak dimethyltryptamine because it's having a, a near death experience, if you will. And then it starts to separate the soul from the body. And this is where the rebirthing can happen because when we can take the ego out of the body and the body can be on its own, we're designed to live forever. We're designed to be whole. Our birthright is wholeness. It's not dis-ease. Dis-ease is a whole other thing we can get into, but that birthright can be stepped into in an instant because it's all energy. So when we can remove and the disillusion of ego and all those things and have our dimethyltryptamine, not somebody else's, not some other plants, mm. our dimethyltryptamine running through the body, which is the God molecule, we can experience massive transformation in a very short amount of time. Mm. Yeah, I've uh, also listened to some near death experiences and they I hear that every time they they consistently I hear them say that they learn how much suffering <laughs> that there is in this reality. And they kind of don't want to yes. go back, you know? And I think, you know, if that scares anybody, we just said like the soul leaving the body, it's, you know, obviously we're not going to that point where we're <laughs> literally going to die, but you get a hint of that. Like you get a hint of be communing with like your higher self, your soul, your, you know, and it's like this direction or even, you know, talking to bring it back soma somatic, benefits. Like I can feel in my body for me personally, like a shift happening of like, you can let that go or that's not how it was. Tara it's like this, you know, or giving myself credit for something or like having compassion on myself or others, or, you know, letting go of, it feels like a body release, which the only other thing that has ever been that effective for me has been plant medicines. But I like how you're talking about two things. One, it's your own you're just making your own DMT yourself through the most simple thing in the world that we have all done a couple hundred times, at least already probably listening to this, except you, you probably only breathe like six times. Cause you do, <laughs> you, <laughs> you do so much breath work. You've only had four inhales so far. No. <laughs> but, Three. I know you go to these experience breath work people and they're like, okay, like only three breaths a minute. And I'm like, bro, I'm not there. I, I <laughs> wish I was at that. So I'm, that is props, but I'm not there. Yeah, um, yeah. But then also like you're um, getting to this place through breath work where you're able to um, have these deep shifts, right? Deep, deep shifts. Right. And even in meditation, like if, people don't have a morning routine, highly recommend. It's so awesome to kick off like doing breath work using, we'll talk about the breath source in a little while. Like I did it this morning and I did it before meditation, right? I used your app this morning and it was, uh, I forgot which guy I use. He's kind of like Qigong stuff, like a lot of movements. Right. And like when we get into that higher state, through breath, through maybe a little movement, getting the energy flowing in the body and then drop in meditation, it's pretty awesome, you know? So, um, okay, hold on. All right. We got to shift a little bit. Okay. Cause I don't want people to not hear what you've been up to <laughs> in the world. Okay. So 
So, okay. Breath, obviously important to you. You've done deep dive on it. And I asked you, I'm like, why did you make a breath breath work app? And I'll ask you again, and you can take longer than 30 seconds at a busy dinner this time. Why did you make the breath source? Can you tell that whole backstory? Yeah. Thank you. So I own a real estate investment company and we're national. And at the height of the last crash, we were buying properties all over the U S so we eventually ended up in nine separate states and we would go in and we would purchase distressed multifamily properties. So big apartment buildings that were 150 up to 800 units. And we'd work in places like Ferguson, Missouri, and we were there during the riots. And we would work in places like the, the roughest parts of Cincinnati and Kentucky and Indianapolis and We'd go into the places that were the forgotten shadows of the country. We'd buy these buildings and we had an umbrella company that would purchase the property, a uh, property management company that would take on management, a nonprofit that would help empower the financial consciousness and awareness of the individuals that lived there because our goal was to raise the collective consciousness in the neighborhood, create an asset out of this property, but keep the people that lived there there. I had no interest in going in and displacing everybody, which is typical crony capitalism where they just go in and they force everyone out and it creates just giant problems across the board. So we'd keep the people that were there that, that meant good. There were people that needed to be removed, which we also had a private security company that we built and we'd go in and we'd do our own surveillance and we would take down the guys that were the drug dealers and sex traffickers and we'd cuff them up and the cops would come get them. And once we got them cleaned up, we had a construction company and we would start construction. Wow. And so with the construction company, we would roll in somewhat militaristic style. We'd set up a bunch of, uh, we'd set up a base camp and we'd set up all of our connexes that had all of our tools and everything in them. Everything was very systematic, very process oriented. And we had built a, a software company to build a software to streamline the renovation construction industry. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we did that is because all of our laborers were homeless people. So we would take homeless people off the streets. We'd house them in the property that we had just purchased and we'd set up. Um, we had a systematic flow of everything that would get ordered in. We'd set it all up. And um, if they were brand new to us, we would take them shopping, get them groceries and all those types of things, get them set up. And then we'd give them the tools for the trade. So if Tara came off the street, we would see that you're you're obviously – very fit and you could handle some heavy things and we would put you in hanging cabinets or something of that sort. And everything had a very process orientated flow to it. And we broke construction down into 41 bite-sized pieces. Um, I've been a biology geek for a long, long time. I've studied under Dr. Joe um, Dispenza and Dr. Bruce Lipton most of my life and just understand cellular structure, mental break states and all these things that cause people to latch on to old behaviors. So I want them to create a new behavior. So Tara would just get hanging cabinets. You wouldn't put the poles on the cabinets. You wouldn't adjust the doors. You wouldn't do any of those things. You'd just hang them. And so um, with this software that we built, it would pull you through the process. And we created algorithms from Dr. Joe Spence and Dr. Bruce Lipton's teachings of biology of belief, falling in love with the future self, and it would create significance in these individuals over time. So within a couple of weeks, they were accidentally succeeding because I had to combat the self-sabotage of the mind. When they come in, they're all gung-ho and it's too good to be true. And then the self-sabotage kicks in within 48 to 72 hours. And so we're, we're combating that. And so we figured out how to overcome that by always being ahead of them with it. And part of the process of them healing uh, in leaps and bounds, quantum leaps, is breath work. And so I would fly around 300 days a year to the properties and I would constantly be doing breath work. So when I showed up at the property, they knew there'd be a breath session coming at 6 a.m. the next morning. They'd all be downstairs and we'd have this big room and there'd be 40 or 50 of them laid out and we would do breath work. And they would come up after the session and they'd be like, hey, how do we get this breath work? Can we please get access to this somehow? And I never had a way to get it to them. So I'd always just send them a video off of YouTube, the Raj or Dan Vadney or Michael Mayer or somebody like that. And, but they oftentimes they didn't have 
let's say 99.9% of the time, they didn't have subscriptions to YouTube. So ads would pop up in the middle of the breath work and things like that would happen. And so I decided three and a half years ago, one of them called me at Thanksgiving and said, hey, I'm having a tough time. Can I get some breath work? And so I sent him Niraj and I sent him a damn bad name video. And then I just decided then and there we need to build an app for them. So we started building the app three and a half years ago. And we've now launched six months ago. And it's worldwide in over 60 countries and over 21,000 breathers right now. And we have the world's leading breath masters on the app. And it's the world's first breathwork marketplace app. And we're also launching Source Latino this month. And it's the world's first Latino-only breathwork app from Mm. all the countries that represent the Latino Mm. uh, culture. Very cool. And so all of that came from these homeless angels that I thought I was there in their life to help them. But in return, they were there in my life to not just help me, but help the world come to breath. Wow. I'm going to say what most of my listeners are probably thinking. Holy shit, dude. (laughs) That's amazing. (laughs) Okay. Let's, let's back it up just a little bit. Um, okay. So it was really funny because at that dinner that I met you at, I remember, (laughs) do you remember I like brought up the book conscious capitalism? I had just read that. I had just finished that book. I, I don't know why it took me so long to read it and I had just finished it. And somehow it came up in conversation with somebody was, somebody was saying something that reminded me of it. I, I didn't know anything about you. And then I, you know, listened to you on a podcast later and was like, well, we've got like the literal <laughs> embodiment of conscious capitalism right here at this table. You just sat there quietly and just nodded. <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> let's back up like, Oh, okay. So let's talk about this concept. So you had this real estate company, you already had a construction company. Like when did this idea come in or how did this come about in your journey and your soul? I mean, obviously you're, you know, into personal growth and consciousness and being heart centered and leadership and all those things. But how did this come about? Like, and can you talk a little bit more about the idea that you had to employ homeless people? Well, I grew up with a fairy tale childhood. Uh, we had a big ranch in southwestern Colorado. It was 7,000 acres of ranch land, and we called it native land. And we had a creek running through it, and we were homeschooled. And believe it or not, we we didn't have really any money to speak of. Um, my grandpa was the owner of the land, and my dad was kind of co-owner with Papa, we called him. And so we were homeschooled. We were we weren't rich by any means, everything. I mean, we hunted elk for our food. So I would go out and shoot multiple elk a year. We'd pack them out of the mountains with the horses. And um, we lived on elk and and we lived on fish and we lived on the land in a lot of ways. Awesome. And enough said, so, I get it now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so we lived off the land in a lot of ways. And as a kid, I always felt this draw to help people understand their wholeness. And so I was raised Christian and we were raised that if, if you lay hands on the sick, you can heal the sick and we're two or more gathered together, it's done. And so all the basic Bible stuff. And so we would go to the old folks homes and we would, we would be there to pray for these elderly people and be a light in their lives and all this stuff. And I remember being in the presence of these people that were in their fifties and sixties and they were completely, um, they were, they couldn't move. They were Tourette's and they had um, paralyzations and they were out of their mind. And I just, I saw nothing but wholeness with them. And I, I couldn't understand why they would allow themselves to be anything but whole. And so I'd go home at night and I would get in the shower cause I love showers and I would, I would pray for them and I would see myself sending energy to them. And so from a young kid, I had this healer mentality. And now I understand that I brought that forward from multiple lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And so I was moving energy as a child and I would feel this electrical impulse just moving through my body. And I knew I was touching something. I believed it was a God that was separate from me at that time. Mm -hmm. Now I know that it's the God within. And so as time went by, I still had a heart for people all the time. Barely made it through high school, didn't go to college, started my first business at 18 years old. And when I built that business up 
and I got married at 20 years old, went through a lot of stuff with my ex-wife where it created a lot of compassion for humans um, dealing with her. And then we moved to the big city. And then once I got to the big city and I saw the homeless people, I always dreamed of creating a program that would be called Rags to Riches, where I knew I could take these individuals and I could instill in them the values that had been instilled in me and that I could stand beside them and use my place as a safety holder of an environment and allow them to heal and step into the grandest version of the greatest vision that they could hold for themselves. And so I always saw that. And then when we started buying the big buildings and I started seeing into the lives of people who were nearly becoming homeless and the slums that they were living in and the children living in these slums, we would buy properties where there'd be six inches of mushrooms growing out of the baseboards along all the walls, which means there's shit inside the walls. And the environment was just destitute. And yet these children didn't know any different. So they were so happy and so in love with life. Wow. And I'd walk in and they would be hanging on me and they'd be so happy because no one had talked them out of being beautiful. They didn't care that there was mushrooms and shit in the walls and stuff like that. And so as we started to grow in our consciousness of helping these situations turn to a better state, necessity being the mother of all invention, we started to run into problems with labor because no one wanted to work in these slums. No one wanted to work in these buildings. So I'm like, we're going to have to build our own crews. And so when we started building our own crews, we'd put an ad on Craigslist, 10 people would show up, eight people would blow out right away. Like I'm not working here. Two people would, we'd hire them. They'd come the next day. We'd put them in the process and they'd blow out within 48 wow. hours. So I'm like, yeah, we're not doing this. So we built the, band of brothers we called it with the homeless individuals and within a couple of years we were four times faster than anyone in the country wow wow we were renovating four times faster than anyone the fastest hotel renovation companies fastest apartment com renovation companies we were crushing them wow uh you're, it's reminding me of uh and thinking grow rich when napoleon hill is talking about like if you want to help people you don't just give them money you don't Correct. just you teach them how to fish kind of thing and that's yeah. really so much of what you were doing there's so i mean that's conscious can you explain your your definition of what conscious capitalism is if people aren't familiar because i know i got a 17 year old daughter and she's in that like very aware of what's happening in the world and like capitalism is terrible you know and i'm like <laughs> oh so for for those <laughs> what would you say to somebody who you know because understandably what she's talking about there's a lot of really gross energies and greed and horrific things happening in capitalism there's a lot of beauty even in that one i think even though it there's a lot of corruption can you explain what conscious capitalism is for someone who might not have heard that before yeah, so before we jump into conscious capitalism, let's talk about the duality of capitalism. Okay, so yeah. our beautiful country was built on capitalism. And I don't care what country you go to, everyone wants to live in the United States of America yeah. because it's the freedom of capitalism. Right. right. And everything you look around at, all these skyscrapers, I'm on the beach in Miami right now, and all this shit was built because somebody had an idea right. then somebody had a freedom and then somebody was able to execute. Right. And the opposite of capitalism is socialism. And then in those countries, they all want to live here. So you've got socialism, capitalism that can become crony. And then you have conscious capitalism. Right. And so capitalism itself is a very neutral state. And then you can look at it as two different pathways. You can go crony or you can go conscious. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of crony capitalism now where it's all about the money. They don't care what they do. They don't care what they put out there. They don't care what they put in the food, what they put in the clothes. They start holistic and then they veer off the pathway because now all of a sudden the board members want more profits and all that mm -hmm. stuff is crony. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of conscious capitalism is keeping that forward moving momentum of progressing as a society but doing it in a way that understands how humans form and function and then operating as such. So our definition of conscious capitalism is doing business. If you do business in an area or you go do business in a city, everyone in that area wins voluntary or involuntary. That means that 
if they didn't invite you in, they're still going to win, whether it's voluntary and involuntary. Now, people would go, well, how is it that somebody wins by you going in, purchasing a property and raising rents? And when we buy a property, everything has to be done from a capitalist standpoint. You can't buy a property and keep $400 a month rents when we put $5 million into the renovation. Mm -hmm. The conscious way of doing that is going in and meeting every single person, getting down, understanding their story, understanding where they're located, and understanding what needs to be done to manifest the life of their dreams or take them and help them move to another place that can still allow them to stay where they're at because they can't handle a change. So we would budget giant amounts of money to go in and take the elderly that couldn't move or take the people who had no family. We would box up all their stuff. We would rent vans. We would actually go show them other properties that will fit their budget We'd walk the properties with them. It's, it was called a soft landing program. And then we'd pay their first month's rent, last month's rent, and then they can move in. Wow. And we would still make shit tons of money. We'd buy a property for $3 million, put $2 million into it. It'd be worth $10 million year one. And everyone was taken care of. Wow. But the challenge with conscious capitalism is they don't think about the social impact they're having while they're making money. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I was talking about this the other day that we're building all these electric cars and electric trucks, but we don't think about the negative social impact of 3 million truck drivers out of a job. And all they know how to do is drive a truck. Right. So we need to wake up to these things and we are hoping that we can help be a facilitation for that awakening. Mm. Can you talk a little bit more about, cause I'm, I'm fascinated by, not only were you like received in childhood into this pretty awesome environment, you know, with healthy parents, uh, sounds like, and, and being out in nature, learning, you know, work ethic and all of these things. Um, and I have noticed as a mindset coach, I'm always, I get very curious about people. I'm like, what leads to what, you know? Um, and I have noticed, I definitely noticed that the people that I've met, at least that were raised in these types of environments, it's, it's almost always like some sort of ranch or close to it. And like really like healthy parents that really instilled values and, and were loving and kind and held space and, you know, led, like really led their children. Um, it's, it does feel like they have a leg up. <laughs> I shouldn't, shouldn't put it that way, but like, definitely, yeah. you know, it's just like, wow, did you do a lot of mindset work? They're like, I don't know. I just had good parents. I'm like, wow. And then you take on top of that going really deep into that and you get a Travis <laughs> that's doing these <laughs> kinds of things. So can you, can you talk a little bit about, um, your thoughts on that in terms of, you know, the environment in which kids are raised in and then, um, I'm, I guess what I'm uniquely curious about on top of that is like, what do you think led to you being so deeply curious about like personal growth, consciousness, going deeper into that? I don't know if you have an answer, but let's see what you got. <laughs> yeah. Well, first off, um, you're absolutely right. And there's a, I would say the number one pandemic in the United States of America right now is family values. I would say above everything, totally. we have effed up family values. We have, we have pushed the divine feminine into the workforce. We have made the divine masculine um, to be this invulnerable, unbreakable yeah. just thing that has to keep cranking and doing the get the gold watch stuff. And so all of this family values is, and, and I can see, and this is, this is part of the challenge. And this is a big passionate piece for me. I get really frustrated with people that want to talk about shit that they have no experience about. (laughs) And I've been in the white house. I've been in these areas where these people will make laws and they'll do things that they have no clue. They've never even pumped their own gas, let alone be on their hands and knees in a unit with an individual that's working three jobs and she can't even pay for daycare. So she leaves her kids home alone. They don't have a clue. Mm. And so the family values of fatherless families, which I have housed thousands and thousands of fatherless families, 
and mothers working three jobs and leaving their kids home with their five-year-old babysitting a two-year-old and a one-year-old is the pandemic. That is truly what is taking America down. And these kids are raised with no value structure, no system. And I was so blessed to pull the lottery card. And I do believe we choose our parents and our families. I chose that foundation because I knew that it would give me the foundation to be the leader that I needed to be to make the difference on the planet that I desire to make and see the things that I desire to see. And so our mindset was created from having the perfect balance of the divine masculine and divine feminine. My parents are still together. I not, not once in my entire life and still to this day have I ever seen them fight in front of us. Not once have I ever seen them demean one another in front of us. I've never seen them cuss at each other in front of them. I, I, didn't, even, I didn't even hear a cuss word on my parents until like the last five years because I cuss <laughs> like a sailor. And so, so they were the per, like, I just, I cannot give them enough credit. My, I was disciplined as a child and my dad would always say, you know, this hurts me more than you. And he would always sit me down and tell me why I'm getting spanked and why this and why that. And just the, the beauty behind that is irrefutable. And I definitely pulled the lucky card on that. Um, so I was raised that I could do anything that I set my mind to. And I was also raised to be my own boss, to be my own leader. Mm -hmm. And I watched my dad um, in the ranch and I watched him in his businesses lead. And so the desire to grow was always there. I was always out. I'm a projector in human design. I'm a Sagittarius. And I, I just go, go for what I desire to go for. Mm. Wow. Yeah, uh, that's such an interesting um, side by side that you've had of like your childhood and then seeing because I'm sure that was like a pretty shocking uh, discovery for you when you were seeing these families suffering so much in terms of the home environment coming out of an environment that was so like loving and safe and structured and you know, and I'm sure really uh, motivated you to help <laughs> at an even deeper level when you saw that. So good, good work. Good job showing up to the task. At hand. <laughs> you really nailed that. Thank you. <laughs> and I think it's so beautiful that we have the breath source, which by the way, guys, like we'll kind of shift over to the app a little bit. So the breath source, um, I mean, look, I'm pulling it up right now and just kind of looking at it. Like obviously there's some familiar uh, people to my podcast listeners. Cause we just had, um, Pavel Stuchlik on the Noah Aeon. And I see that he's in here. We've got Naraj Naik and a bunch of other like incredible breathwork instructors. Um, and it's really cool because it's, it's more than just, um, yes, there are the quick, like, okay, we're going to jump right in and here's a five minute thing you can do, but there's also education, you know? So it's almost like getting a course if you want it from some of these instructors, which is really cool. Um, you even have live classes in here. Dang. I didn't even see that before. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's beautiful that you were able to help, right. That's what I, I, if I had to, uh, sum up conscious capitalism from my perspective, it's like truly help truly bring goodness to the world. Like truly like think bigger, think more outside of just the person receiving that thing. What is the impact on the, on mother earth? What is the impact on the local community? What is the impact on you? What is the impact on that person? You know, it's like, it's, it's expanding your awareness. And I think it's just so perfect that going through that route, you developed by just sheer, you know, the way things flowed, you develop something that's also going to help people expand their awareness and their ability to help. And it's really cool. So, um, any thoughts to share on the breast source that you, you know, anything you want to say in particular about that for people who might be curious about the app? Yeah. And one quick thing to piggyback off what you just said was I really want to encourage your listeners to understand that conscious capitalism comes from conscious living yeah. and true conscious living has to start with you taking care of yourself first. Yeah. If you think you can go be a conscious capitalist without knowing who you are, right. you're going to end up hurting the people you're trying to help more than if you just leave them alone. Totally. So I can't stress this enough. Dive into you. Mm -hmm. Dive into the work that you do with Tara. Dive into knowing thyself because then when you meet that person that's homeless or you meet that person that needs help, 
you'll see the reflection of you in them. Mm -hmm. And the only way you can do that is knowing yourself so well that you go, ah, I know that feeling. I know that vibration because I know me and I know how it feels and I know what to do with it now. Mm -hmm. So I really want to piggyback that. So the app, um, it's a world's first breathwork marketplace app. So it's like set up like YouTube. So you've got all of the raw content. Everyone is a co-creator. Every one of the breath masters owns a piece of the app. So it's a it's a co-creative collective. And the the goal behind the app is to get to a certain amount of subscribers that we can eventually take the app public. The reason why I want to go public is because we want to go public as a certified B corporation. Certified B corporation is a corporation that is for the people and not for the shareholders. And so it's the it's to design the product to always be the most servant um, oriented towards the users, not towards the shareholders. Nice. And so we'll go public as a certified B Corp. And then the breath masters will be able to experience true wealth. And people are going to say, well, true wealth can mean a lot of things and it can. But we have another challenge on this planet that we have created a mindset of healers of the planet should be paid the least and that is complete and total mm -hmm. bullshit right and i'm here to help turn that around mm -hmm. healers of the planet should never have to worry about money they mm -hmm. should never have to worry about what a plane ticket costs to go teach somewhere they should never have to mm -hmm. think about a hotel they should get put in the ritz and the four seasons everywhere they go and it should never be a question about what's going to be available for them. Mm. So my goal is to help shift that paradigm that the true healers of the planet to put their lives in place to wake us all up are treated as such. And this app is a big form of that. Mm. And Source Latino is coming out and it's the same exact concept and it will be Source Asia. So the breath source is in all is Android and iOS mm -hmm. and it's moving over into Source. So we'll have okay. more breath okay. work that drops into meditation um, mm -hmm. because breath work is the best way, as you said, Tara, yeah. to get into deep meditation. Is your source Latino? Is that going to be, in, are those going to be in Spanish? 100% Spanish. Instruction? Awesome. Yep. So we have breath masters from Argentina, Chile, Brazil, nice. um, Venezuela, Peru, um, Colombia, all of Mexico. Nice. Wow. And all of uh, Spain. And so wow. you'll be able to pick the country you're from if you're a Latino, and you'll be able to actually connect with breath masters from those countries. So they'll be indicated on the tile because, um, and it, it's tough because there's a little bit of dialect change between all of the Latino countries and body mm. language and all those things. So they'll be able to connect through that. Mm. I speak Spanish. That was what I was going nice. to do with my life was teach Spanish. So I'm like, wait, you got like Peruvian maybe. And like, <laughs> you got yeah, these, these ancient cultures that didn't totally lose touch with who they yeah. are and source and the divine. And I'm like, I might have to check that one out myself. <laughs> that yeah, sounds awesome. Yeah. And then you have one in Asia coming later too. Is that what you said? Yeah. So wow. after this one, um, then we'll hit Asia and Eastern Europeans and pull oh. all that together. Wow. Awesome, man. Been busy doing the work. Yeah. Thank you for doing the work. Thank really you. cool. And thank you so much for taking the time. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for doing your own work to like be able to show up in the world as you do, as you just shared with everyone else. It's obvious, you know, it's, it, you have to, or you can't pour from anything. <laughs> yeah. You just, you start to take more than, you're able to give if you don't do your own work. So thank you for doing it. And thanks for coming oh, on and so sharing welcome. with us today. My pleasure. My honor. All the love. Thank you so much, Tara.